every bird in every crumb this is my surrender and this is my surrender here is where i lay down every lie and every doubt this is my surrender Good morning, everyone. Is it so beautiful to be in the house of God? A new day, a new song, amen. Please stand with us together and let's worship the Lord, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Amen. My Savior Redeemer, let's sing. My Savior Redeemer, lifting me from the mire of clay and on my Forever, and I'll never be the same as you gave me from the everlasting to the world we live. The Father's only Son, my Savior, and you will see my Savior.
That's why we have to keep our eyes focused on you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word, your service, the building, your uh, servant, Lord Jesus, bringing your word today, Father God. We give you the glory and honor as we know that you are with us today, Lord. Your healing, your power is available to us, Lord Jesus. We are so grateful and thankful in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Can we give God another hand of praise this morning? You blessed to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's continue to worship him. He has done great things. Amen. Come, let's worship our King. Come, let us bow at his feet. He has done great things. See what a Savior has done. How his love overcomes He has done great things Believe it, church He has done great things Oh, hero of heaven You conquered the grave You free every captive And could get the chain Oh, God You have the grave Every storm, you'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know you will do it again. For your promise, yes, and amen. You have done great things, God. You do great.
Father, we continue to worship you this morning and we give you praise, Lord. You created us and you made us to worship. Because we've forgiven, Lord, by your grace and your mercy. Church, let's continue to worship you in an attitude of thankfulness and gratefulness for who he is. Amen. Before the day, let's see it. Before the day, before the light, before the world all around the sun, God and I stepped down into time, wrote the story of His love for everyone. He has filled our hearts with wonder So that we always remember You and I were made to worship You and I are called to love You and I are forgiven and free You and I embrace and remember I choose to believe you and I will see we were meant to be. Amen, church. Oh, thank you, Lord. And all we are and all we have. Gift from God that we receive. Brought to life, we opened up our eyes. See the majesty, the glory of the King. He has filled our hearts with wonder. So that we always remember you and I were meant to worship. You and I are called to love. You and I are forgiven and free. You and I are surrender. You and I choose to be. You and I. today, church. You and I embrace and You and I choose to believe. You and I will see we were meant to be. We're meant to be. We were meant to be. to worship the singing out church. You and I were made to worship. You and I are called to love. You and I are forgiven and free. You and I embrace and render. You and I choose to believe. You and I will see. We were made Amen. 
to be We were meant to be With our voices missing now We were meant to be Last time We were meant to be Amen, give Him praise this morning Give Him glory Give Him honor He deserves it, amen, sir Oh, Father, you are so good to us, Lord. You are worthy of all the praise, the glory, and honor today. Father, as you've reminded us, Lord, that you've given us, Lord, your goodness, your grace, that we would always remember, always see, and be thankful for all that you've done. You've created us. We were meant to worship you. And so this morning, Father, we do worship you. We exalt you. We thank you, Lord from our hearts, with our lips, Lord, with our hands lifted. And we thank you for who you are to us, Lord, our Savior, our Master, our Provider, our Healer. We thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, bless the rest of this service, the remaining of this service. Bless your people as we open our eyes and our hearts to your word. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And we all say, amen, amen. Can we give God another hand of praise? Amen. You may be seated. Amen. So good to see everyone here in the house. For those online as well, welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. At this time, we're going to continue in our time of worship and receiving our tithes and offerings. Amen. You are so good to me. You are my broken heart. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this portion of our service today that we give, get to give back to you, Lord, your blessings that you bless us with, Lord. Father, may you multiply it, Lord, whatever it is that we lay our hands to, Father, as the book of Nehemiah. And Nehemiah says, Lord, that you would give me strength, Lord. Give us strength to fulfill the calling in our life, Lord. Bless whatever it is that we do and we lay our hands to glorify you with, Lord. Let it increase for your glory, for your 
honor, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we all say, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord another hand of praise, amen. Good morning, church. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please turn your Bibles with me to the book of 1 Peter. We're going to be in the chapter 3, looking at verses 1 to 12 this morning. Chapter, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. We will also be doing our scripture reading for the morning out of this chapter as well. So once you get there, please stand with me and we'll read together the word of God. I'll take the first verse, the odd verses, and you take the, the even verses, church. And let's try to do it together in unison. Amen. Everybody there? Amen. Amen. Once you are there this morning, please stand and we'll read together. Amen. All right. I'll read verse 1. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. Verse 2. Do not let your adornment by merely outward arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. For in this manner in former times the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being submissive to their own husbands. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this portion of scripture that we've landed on and come to today. Not an accident, not coincidence, Father, but it's your perfect ordination this morning that we would teach on this word, grow on this word, Hallelujah. and Father God, that you would just let it be revealed to us in a fresh, new way today. Bless your people, bless those that are hearing, Lord God. Let it be received on good soil, and let it be fertile, Lord God, that it would show, fr show fruit in their lives, in all of our lives. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name, and we all say, amen, amen. amen. You may be seated. It's going to be a good word this morning. Amen, church? Amen. I, I, honestly, I got to tell you, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's whenever we get to this topic, this is probably, the, this is the third time that we are teaching on family in regards to husband and wife. And uh, I believe that the Lord wants us to learn to be better at better wives, better husbands, and a better family. Amen? Amen. Christian family. And so... Um, I, I love it. You know, even though I'm shaking in my shoes right now, I, I, I just pray, I pray, amen, that you would be receptive, not to the words that come out of David's mouth, but the words that God is speaking to your hearts right now, amen? And so that's why it's going to be a good word, amen? amen. 
just a recap of last week, chapter 2, as we close out that chapter, verses 11 to 25, the title of the message last week was, Not of this world. We're not of this world that Peter reminds us. And so being reminded that we're just passing through in this world, guess what else is not of this world? It's our conduct, our character. What else is not of this world is our calling. Amen? And Peter says, hey, get your mind off the things of this world. Of course, we're we're living in this life. We're going to face the difficulties of this life. But guess what? We don't belong here. And because we physically don't belong here, we spiritually don't belong here, so does our conduct. It is not of this world. It is of the kingdom of heaven. Our conduct should be Christ-like. Our character should be Christ-like. And our calling should be Christ-like. Amen? Amen. It should be honorable, trustworthy. The Bible says that it is commendable before God. And that's what the word commendable means, that God is blessed by our conduct, our character, and our calling when we honor and respect him. Pretty much the word fear that the Christian, um, the, the, the word of God teaches us is to fear God, is to honor God, and to respect him. And it says that we would be good examples, and if, and if we are good examples, we'll be a good example to those who do not believe, which is the Gentiles. And that they would Be saved and speak of the goodness of God because of your actions and your lifestyle. Amen? Amen. And with this conduct, church, it says, Peter reminds us that we should be submissive to the government, the ordinances of man in our country. Amen? And I I forgot to to add in a verse last week in Acts chapter 4 as Peter and John were in the council uh, of the uh, of the many and they were preaching and they were being ridiculed and they were being discouraged to stop preaching about the name of Jesus and all the miracles that were happening but they both said you know what it doesn't matter to us whether it's right or wrong to you guess who we're going to trust and obey it's God whether you tell us to stop preaching we're going to obey God instead amen? amen and even though there's ordinances and rules in our government we as Christians follow by them rules but hey, our conscience comes alive and then the Holy Spirit tells us this is not right for you to do. It is not right for you to follow according to the word of God. We don't do it. Amen. And that's why it's important for us as Christians to be influential, to make changes in the laws of our government. Because if we don't take a stand, church, the world will take a stand and the world will take over. And I pray that that as Christians, that we would be good examples, that we would be bold, not only in the things that we do and say, but also when we go into the, to the um, house to vote, when it's time to vote, yes. that we vote yes. godly. Amen. I, I'm not standing here to tell you how to vote, but if we're reading our word every single day and we're going verse to verse every Sunday, amen, we're directed by the Holy Spirit. When we put pen to paper, On the day of to vote, we vote according to the word of God. So that's what Peter reminds us last week. We submit to government, fearing God. And he says to love and respect each other. That we're set apart. And lastly, being submissive, not only to government, but also to masters. As uh, the Roman Empire in that time, the, the population, half of that population were slaves. And majority of that, the half of the population were Christian slaves. And so we, we can understand where Peter is coming from. He's writing this letter to the Christian slaves. Maybe they're complaining. I don't like the situation that I'm in. And Peter says, hey, be a good example to your masters. Even if they treat you harsh, they are not good to you. That is credit to you before the Lord. When you are ridiculed, when you are treated harshly, mistreated, abused, you still love them, you pray for them, you still serve them in honesty and transparency. Amen? Amen. And so with that mindset that we were left off with last week in closing out chapter 2, this is a whole different submission this week in chapter 3. Government, masters, but now to the family unit. In our text this morning, it starts out with wives likewise. Why does Peter say that? 
Likewise, there is no other example but the example of Jesus Christ that he's talking about. Wives, likewise, follow the example of Christ. Amen? As we close out chapter 2, Peter says, Our Lord and Savior who was ridiculed, who was reviled against, who was beaten, he did not in return revile against them, his enemies. So Peter says, likewise, wives, don't take the example of the world. It is normal for us. That is our human nature. When, when, when people do bad against us, we do bad against them. We fight fire with fire, amen? That is our, that is our normal nature. Wives, I know that. You guys are tough. You guys want to get back at those who, who, who are doing wrong to you. But Peter says, no, you're, 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 you're following the example not of this world, but of Jesus Christ. The ultimate example. Your Lord and Savior, wives, was beaten, was mocked, spat upon, if I will be able to say that. The Bible says that he was beaten beyond description, yet he did not repay them for their evil. And Peter says in his opening verses, likewise, follow the example of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And he says, be submissive to your own husbands. I know we talked about this last week, guys. We don't like to submit. Even now as you're walking with the Lord, you may not like to submit to the Lord as you wake up on that day. Amen? But we know that if we don't submit to the Lord, the rest of our day is going to be hell. Literally. I should have started my day off with the Lord. Because I didn't, I chose my flesh. Remember, we talked about the first and second chapter. Peter says, put away, lay aside. Of course, the temptation is always going to be there, church. But he's telling us to make the choice. Choose life. Choose Christ. Amen. Amen. Be submissive in this way. We are yielding to the work of the Holy Spirit. And as we are yielding to the work of the Holy Spirit, our text says to be submissive to your own husband. Perhaps the culture in this time is probably really relevant to our time today. Perhaps the, the wives in that time were submissive to the information of their culture at that time. We live in an age today where it says, women, you need to be independent. Women, you are powerful. And, and I agree to that to, to some extent that, hey, guys, you know, ladies, gals, sorry. If the Lord puts something on your heart to, 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 to do something and to be great in your calling, in the calling, in the umbrella of your calling that is God glorifying, then do it. Yes, you may, you can. But not apart from God. Not apart from God. And that is the difference between us and the world is that the world is on their own, on their own thinking. We are not. We are controlled. We are mastered. We are under the lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So Peter says, be submissive to your own husband. Perhaps the information of the world has influenced you in your lifestyle, in your life as a, as a wife. And he reminds us, hey. You need to be submissive, not to the things and the information of this world. You need to be yielding and submissive to your own husband. Amen? Amen. To your own. How are we going to grow in our relationship, in our family relationship, in our husband and wife relationship? By being submissive to your own, in your own household. Amen. And he says that even if some do not obey the husband's, if they are not obe being obedient, they do not believe and not walking with Christ. He says the word that they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. Actions speak louder than words. Can I get an amen, church? Amen. I mean, you can, you can preach all you want to your husband and tell him to come to church or go to church. Go to men's group. But if you ain't walking that walk and you're just talking to talk most of the 100% of the time, it's, it's ineffective. Peter tells us 
the culture in that time, maybe the wives were telling the men to do a lot of things spiritually, to come join the fellowship, the house church. The men were like, nah, man, I got, I got work to do. I, you know, I got other plans. I got to go hang out with the guys. And the wife was praying so hard for the husband to come to, to faith with, in Jesus Christ. But her conduct is so off from, from what she's saying. Peter is telling us this morning, if without a word, you don't even have to say a word. But it's by your conduct, the way you live your life, the way you carry yourself as a godly Christian woman. A godly Christian woman that you will win your husband to the Lord. And not only your husband, but your family and your friends to the Lord. Actions Hallelujah. speak louder than yes. words th yes. this morning. Amen. We're specifically talking about, in our text this morning, the wives. But for anyone listening, hey, put this to yourself. Are you, are you talking more than showing in your lifestyle that you're walking with God? Hey, I'm, yes. you're, you're probably talk, telling somebody, I love you, man. I'm praying for you that you would come to see Jesus. But your, your, your lifestyle is contrary to what you're talking about. Yes. Hey, I'm praying for you to stop, you know, stop doing this and this. But you're out there doing the same thing, opposite of the Christian life. How, how do we become effective Christians to those who don't believe? This is the theme of what Peter is telling the Christian church. It's by your conduct. It's by your conduct. Of course, the words are going to matter. But how much more the words and the actions put together being effective to the non-believer? Amen. And it says in verse 2, when they observe your chaste, the word chaste meaning innocent, not guilty, conduct accompanied by fear. So this word, the, the, the word conduct, once again, actions, plus fear is powerful. Amen. Not, not fear of the husband, but fear of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The, the Christian woman is first and foremost fearing God. She wants to honor God in all that she does. And that's what Peter is reminding us this morning. Are, are, we, are we living a lifestyle today, church? Hallelujah. Amen. Our chaste conduct, is it accompanied by fear, a godly fear? Can we ask ourselves that question this morning? Am I living a lifestyle that is accompanied by honoring God? I'll let you answer that. You don't need it. Praise <laughs> And Some of us may answer this question as, no, I'm not. I haven't been. Well, this morning, the Lord is speaking to all of us, including myself. I have to be reminded every single day. And as the Apostle Paul will say, if, if, you, you know, if there's a sinner out there uh, and you think you're a sinner, guess what? I'm the chief of sinners. And because I am that... The chief who owns all the grace and the mercy has bestowed his love upon me. Like the song we just sang. We're made to worship. We've been forgiven. This is what we're called to be. And I thank God for his forgiveness. So great. Greater than my sin. Amen. Amen. And even though you may feel like that this morning, I want to let you know that the grace of God is so much greater. So our conduct accompanied by fear would be powerful to the non-believer. Verse 3 says, Do not let your adornment be merely outward wives. I know you're beautiful on the outside. You look beautiful. You look beautiful this morning. Even though I can't see the online family, they're, they're beautiful right where they're at. Amen? But don't just let it be the outward appearance, merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Verse 3 says, Oh, so many people are so focused on the outside look. I got to get new clothes. I got to get, get my hair done, my nails done, my toes. Oh, man. And, and, and those, those things are great. You know, the, the women love that, you know, and, and they deserve that. You know, yeah. They, Peter says, don't just let it be about that. There is something more deeper than that. Yes. Amen? Right. 
yeah, you look good from the, from the outside, but th- there's, God is looking beyond the outside. Yes. And isn't that our world today, that we're all the facade on the outside? But so deep inside, in the depths of our heart, we're so broken. That's right. Amen? So broken, so lonely. And he says in verse 4, Rather let it be the hidden person of the heart, with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. That's all that matters today, church. I mean, yes, I believe what God is doing in a Christian woman's life is that he's working from the inside out. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care about the outside. Yes, the outside appearance, that's later. That's like plan Z, A to Z. Plan A, though, is to work on your heart, the quiet person of your heart. Many in the world are looking for the attractive beauty on the outside. Oh, she looked good. He looked good. They're so loud and they're calling for attention. Look at me, look at me. But when you really sit down and talk to them, they're so broken, so aimless in life, not knowing where to go until God comes. Amen. As Ephesians reminds us, but God, God steps in. Amen. I was this and this and that, but God. I had no hope in my life but God. That's what God is doing this morning. Wives, he's speaking to you this morning. Yes, you look great on the outside, but what he's more important, what is more important to him is that he wants to work on your heart. He wants to put confidence in you. He wants to remind you that you are a daughter of God, of the King, of the Most High, that you are valuable, that you have purpose. And the world is telling you, no, you don't. You are only good for for this, for this one night, if I would. You are only good for this temporary thing, and I'm done with you. But yet God says, no, your heart is valuable to me. Why? Psalms 139 says, because he created you fearfully, wonderfully. And then that same chapter says, and I know it. Do you know it this morning? Do you know that you were fearfully and wonderfully made? Wives, women, young women who are not married yet. I'm, I'm speaking to those that are looking to marriage, looking for love. Wives, soon to be wives. I would like to save you from the heartache in the future. Psalms 139 says, I know this. I want you to know this, that God has a plan for you and a purpose. And we may hear that all the time. It may become cliche and without value. But you need to be reminded today. And you need to know that God has a purpose and a plan. You were wonderfully and fearfully made. And he looks at the inside. And then he works from the inside out. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that, wives? Aren't you thankful for that, women? Even as the world may look on the outside, God is looking to prepare a woman from the inside out. And he says, it is precious in the sight of God. You are precious in the sight of God. A Christian woman who is submissive to her own husband, who is fearing and respecting and praying for her own husband and praying that he would come to faith in Jesus Christ, not so much by words, but by her deeds. Amen. It is precious in the sight of God, honoring in the sight of God. It says, verse 5, For in this manner in former times the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being submissive to their own husbands. Peter brings up the Old Testament. Hey, hey, let's go back to the old school, old times. Abraham and Sarah, for example. Verse 6 Calling him Lord. Guys, don't, don't get ahead of yourselves yet. <laughs> what? what? Just call me Lord. That's what's up. And notice the Lord is cap- uh, lo- lowercase l. It's not capital L. <laughs> With little Lord. 
I, I, know, I know us guys like to be called, you know, the king of the house, and truly you are. But you know what? As, as you are being called Lord and king of your own house and, and area and family, uh, it's not just about title, guys. It's about responsibility. Yes. Ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> don't, never mind, don't call me Lord no more. <laughs> As Peter brings up Sarah and Abraham and she calls him Lord, there is a responsibility for us guys. And we'll talk about that later as we get into that. But this is the honoring part, the respecting part yes. that God reminds the wives. As in old times, from the beginning, we continue to follow this example of righteousness and blessings as you are respecting the, the ruler and the leader of your house. There's three P's that I want to share with you this morning, and that is the first P is priest. A priest. Someone who leads his family to the Lord. Who, someone who is an example of what God has done in his life and shows them the way to Jesus Christ. Amen? The second P is protector. You are the priest and you are the protector. That's what the Lord is, right? You want to be Lord? You must be a priest of your household. You must be a protector of your household. You want to be a Lord? You, want to be, you must be a provider of your household. Three Ps, priest, protector, provider. As we follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen? <laughs> and just remember, we're lowercase l, Lord. But as God is speaking to the wives and reminding them as Christian women, look at what the women of old did. They respected their husbands. They obeyed their husbands. Amen. And it says, whose daughters you are if you do good. Amen, women, wives. You are a daughter of God if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. And now this part is a part that tells us and encourages us that we should never be in an abusive relationship. That we, it is not normal. If you're in a relationship that is abusive, it is not a normal relationship. And you don't obey them because out of this worldly fear, but you obey them because of a godly fear this morning. Amen? Amen. That's what a Christian wife does. She obeys God. She obeys God and honors her husband. Not of an abusive fear, a worldly fear, not out of terror, but as in a godly fear unto God. She respects, she is submissive to her, home, to her own husband. Amen. And that is a precious sight before the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we give God a hand of praise this morning? It is important for us to talk about the family because that's what the world is trying to break down right now is family. The world is saying that there is no such thing as a mother and a father, a husband and wife. You can be whatever you want. But the word of God says different. That there is a husband and there is a wife. And there are children involved. And as the priest, the protector, and the provider, we are to show them the way to the Father, to the way to the Son, the way to the Holy Spirit. And as a godly wife, she would respect and pray for her husband, be submissive to him, yielding to all that God is calling the husband to do. Verse 7, husbands. Here we are, guys. Lords, you guys ready? <laughs> Lowercase lords, likewise, the word likewise, following Jesus, amen? Yes. Following Jesus, he says, dwell with them with understanding. Oh, guys, it doesn't mean that we give up on our wives and say, I'm done with this. I give up on you. What is this? 
one year of marriage, I'm done with you. You ain't going to change ever out of our first year of marriage. Some are celebrating 20. Some are celebrating 25. We just finished 17. Some are 30. I praise God for that. Amen? That you just didn't give up on your marriage, but you dwelled. Amen? Just like you abide in Christ. You stayed with him through the good and through the bad times. Peter is saying you must dwell. Plant your feet in the soil. It may be muddy today, uncomfortable, but guess what? There's going to be a good time where you're going to get out of that muddy soil. It's going to be good ground, and you're going to be able to walk properly with understanding. And he says, giving honor to the wife. Come to an understanding, guys. Uh, come to an understanding that you are human. We are all human. We make mistakes. Nobody is perfect. He says, give honor to your wife. Likewise, respect. Pray for your wife as she's praying for you. And it says, because she is the weaker vessel. Guys, husbands, you are stronger than your wife. You are capable of doing other things that she cannot do. Uh, I don't, you know, whenever Tita leaves me at home with the kids and, and asks me to do this and this and that, and I'm, you know, usually I'll go to work and come back and I'm like, man, you know, what would you guys do today? She says, man, I did this. I took care of the kids. And, you know, in my mind, sometimes it's like, man, I couldn't even see the, the difference. And, you know, I've learned to not say those words because... Right? I, I don't ever, you know, the first time I said it, I learned my lesson. I think I said it maybe two, three times, four or four times. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I, I know that those are fighting words, you know, uh, when I say, what'd you guys do? You know, I, you slept all day? I don't know. I, those, are, those are not good words to say. But when she leaves me at home with the kids, you know, and I only have two, and she asks me to, you know, please do this and please do that, and then, you know, eight hours of, ten hours of the day goes by, and I haven't even done, I haven't even cooked the kids breakfast. And then uh, she comes home, and she asks, what did you guys do? And I'm like, oh, man, you know, this is probably the same thing she feels when I come home and say those things. <laughs> and there are things that we are capable of doing on the outside, and maybe at home, around the house, that the wives, you know, cannot do, and vice versa. You know, the wife does... And takes care of the home like nothing, you know, with all of her might and strength and wisdom. And then we can't even do those things. The multitasking part of it. You guys are blessed with that, wives. And then, you know, we, we, we can only think about one thing at a time, you know. Just take the trash out. And then I got ten other things to do. And I'm like, what, what is number two again? What is number three? What do I got to do? But Peter is saying, hey, you, you guys are husbands. You're strong. Your wife is a weaker vessel. In this case, this is where the protector and the provider and the priest part comes in. You are the priest. You are the protector of your family, of your wife. You are the provider. Yes. Yes. Peter reminds us that she's a weaker vessel. Uh, we must be an example as well. It's part of what being Lord is, is, is even in the good or bad times, we still continue to walk consistently and be an example consistently of a godly man. Amen, kingdom men? Amen. And it says, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Oh, man, that's, that's, that's deep. <laughs> you mean all this time, Peter, I've been praying for something, but it's been hindered because I wasn't being honoring to my wife. I was being disrespectful to my wife. I was treating her bad. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. I have not treated my wife with honor. And look at, isn't it amazing that it's just, it's just one verse that pertains to the husbands, but yet so deep. And all the, the opening verses, six verses for the wives, and then when it comes down to, to the one verse that pertains to the husbands, I believe it's so much more deeper 
a greater command for us as leaders. Right. Amen? As husbands, understanding, dwelling, honoring, recognizing that we too both have this inheritance of grace through Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? It's like the idea of what Paul's ministry was to, to the Gentiles. The grace in the gospel of Jesus is no longer just to the Jews, but to the Gentiles. And perhaps in the society of, of this time, of Peter's time, of course, men are just the rulers. Women are secondary. Children are below. And it only matters, and it's only about men. And we're reminded this morning that both of us, men and women, have the inheritance both to the grace of life through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We need to understand that. Why? So it doesn't hinder our prayers to God. Some of y'all praying this morning, you've been praying for so many things and for so long, it felt like God is not answering. Why? Why this morning? Perhaps something's hindering it. You are not doing well as a priest, protector, and a provider. You are not being what God is calling you to be, to love and to honor your spouse. Forgiveness. What is it for, you know, husbands, we need to understand that our wives need to be forgiven. Our wives need to be loved. Our wives need quality time. <laughs> Amen. And let's continue on this morning, verse 8. I didn't give you a title for the message this morning. I was going to use a, a blessing in disguise, but I didn't like the word disguise because God does not hide anything from us. But uh, uh, here's the title of the message this morning. It's we're called to, to a blessing. Amen. Amen. And there's in order for us to receive the blessing of God, there's some things that we need to get right in our lives. And it starts off with the marriage, the wife the husbands. We would not be hindering anything. To hinder our worship. I wouldn't be able to preach up here if I had a bad relationship with my wife right now. I've realized in the time of ministry that whenever God calls and opens doors to opportunities of ministry, the one thing that I always want to be in, in, in alignment with is the blessing of my wife. So nothing would be hindered. It would feel odd for me to be out there talking about the good goodness of God, yet knowing that my wife is upset with me at home. Uh, it, so, so the work that I'm doing would be hindered because I haven't made amends with my wife. That, was, that is what God is calling us to do, or vice versa, husband and wife, wife and husband. What's hindering your growth in the Lord today? Is there a forgiveness and a healing that needs to be made Today is a day of healing. Amen. And Peter is reminding us our call to blessing is this. Verse 8. Finally. This is how we do this, guys. Husbands, wives, finally, here is the solution to our problems. Amen. He says, all of you be of one mind. Having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous. Amen. Amen. Be in unity with one another. Some things to work on for all of us. Have compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Love as brothers. A brotherly, godly love. No matter who it may be, no matter what has been done, Love as brothers. Be tenderhearted. Be kind. And he says, be courteous. Be courteous this morning. Verse 9 says, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. How many want to inherit a blessing today? You want to inherit a blessing in your marriage, amen, in your relationships. This is what we must do as a husband and wife, be in unity, be it in the mindset of Christ, not returning evil for evil, 
not reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this. Amen. Amen. This is our calling, church. Amen. Amen. Some are praying, Lord, what do you want me to do? What is my ministry? Well, first, start by not returning evil for evil. <laughs> Not, you know, not being revi reviling. That is your first ministry. And Peter says, you were called to do this. You were created to do this. Many times we are looking to buy the, uh, the gifts to make amends and make things right with our relationships. Yet Peter says, hey, do the first things first. Amen. Be kind. Amen. Yes. Be courteous. Hey, one of the most uh, courteous things that I, that I get to do at home is, is wash dishes. And I'll, tell, and I'll say that without no shame, guys. Wash dishes and throwing loads of laundry. Yes. And, and I don't get to do the outside work anymore because we hired a, a, a landscaper to do that. It, just, it was just too much on my plate, you know. So I had to, I had to do more of the inside work now. It's, it's all good. I'd rather wash some dishes at night. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know why? Because it, it, it blesses my wife. Amen. And in return, she does things that blesses me. And I believe that Peter is, is getting us to a mindset that we should be blessing each other. Right. Amen. Amen. Have you thought to bless your spouse this week or recently? Yes. And, you know, for all of us godly men, it's, uh, we may have thought to, to buy something nice. Yes, that is great. But can, can, I, can I just challenge you in this one area? If the blessing is, is vacuuming, or taking the trash out, let's do it. Let's bless our wives in that way. Amen. Perhaps fold the laundry or take the laundry and put it away. Wives, how can you bless your husband? Do the yard work. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, guys. It's not reversal of roles here. The mindset is not the reversing of the roles or to go out. Hey, I'll, do, I'll wash the dishes if you cut down a tree outside. <laughs> no, but the, the mindset is blessing each other. Amen? Amen. Uh, you know, another thing that has been a blessing to our relationship in the, in the couple of, last couple of years is being in the Word together. It's, it's uncomfortable because we're reading a passage of Scripture uh, it's uncomfortable at first, but then you become comfortable because you're talking about this passage and you're being transparent, you know, in the struggles of your life as a husband. I'm telling my wife these things that I'm going through, you know, and my wife in return is telling me the things that she's thinking of and going through as, as well as, as my wife. Being in the word together, that's a blessing. God wants us to do that. Amen. Amen? Yes. The world doesn't want us to do that. He, he wants us to, to be on, you know, the, the world wants us to be in our own time, doing our own thing, being separate all the time. But yet Peter says, be one mind, be one relationship, be one marriage, be a blessing to each other because we're called to this. Amen. So this week, find something to be a blessing to your wife. What, what is it that you do that you don't do normally, but you'll do it this week just to bless her. Amen. Find that I encourage uh, both the wife and the husband, even the kids, as you're listening. How can I bless my mom and dad? Pick up the trash, pick up the toys. <laughs> Don't eat so much. <laughs> but be a blessing to one another. Amen. Amen. Lastly, verse 10 to 12. And this is taken from the idea of Psalms chapter 34, verses 12 to 6. It says, for he, who love, who, for he who would love life and see good days, we all, this is all of us, we love our lives. We love the life that God has given us. We want to see good days for our family, for ourselves. He says this, let him refrain his tongue from evil. If you love your life, you love the life that God has given you. You want to see better days ahead of you. Refrain your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Stop lying. Stop lying to yourself first and foremost. And be truthful 
in your relationship with your spouse. Be transparent. If you're going through something, let's talk it out. Let's dwell right here in this situation. I ain't leaving. <laughs> Just like Jacob, right? I ain't leaving until I get my blessing. Until you talk to me. Let's hash this out right now. Stop lying to me. If you got to say that to each other, hey, this is biblical. The Bible says, stop your evil. Stop your deceit. Speak the truth right now. Amen? We have to move on. We've got to progress in our godly Christian relationship. And he says, let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Pursue godliness today, church. Amen? Amen? Turn away from all the things that hinder your prayers in your walk and growth in Christ. Verse 12, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Once again, it is precious in the sight of the Lord when we do good towards one another and we honor God. And his ears are open to their prayers. Amen? Amen. Oh, I just love... The fact that I can come before the Lord knowing that, hey, Lord, I know that I am not perfect, but I've done everything in my strength to do what is right. And deep within my heart, I know that God is listening. God sees. Amen. And I pray that that is our attitude today, that we've done everything that you, you, we, we can, that you can to make things right. And the blessing is this is that the eyes of the Lord is on those who do right. Even if you got to confront your enemies and tell them what is on your heart, what is truthful. For Christians, we don't talk about everybody else to everybody else. We talk to the person that is, that is talking or whatever, gossip. We want to set things right. We want to do what verse, verse 10 says. Stop your lying. Speak the truth right now. That's what Christian men and women do, is we speak the truth. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord are on those who do what is right, and his ears are open to their prayers. We want God to listen to us. Amen? We want God to listen to us when we call out his name, Jesus. So many people calling out, Jesus, Jesus, hear me, Lord. Jesus, I, I don't hear them. They're not walking in the ways that I've called them to walk. That's right. And of course, he's going to listen to the voice of the sinner. When the sinner calls out, I need you, Lord, forgive That's me. Right. He hears them at that moment. Yes. But when they're in this relationship where they think that they can love God and love the world at the same time, God is like, no, you're not in a genuine relationship with me. I pray that that is our, 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 our challenge and our, you know, uh, things that we draw towards as believers is that we want God to listen to our prayers this morning. And lastly, it says that the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. There's a promise to uh, the follower of Christ, but there's also a promise to those who turn away from Christ, that the face of the Lord is against those who do what is unright before the eyes of the Lord. Yes, I pray that that is not us, church. Yes. I pray that we will do everything that we can Amen. so that our marriage marriages would grow in the Lord and that it would not be dishonoring to him but that his face would be towards us, his blessings. Amen. And the days ahead of us would be good and blessed. Amen, Amen church? Yes. That his face would not be against us, but that it would be towards us, and that he would commend everything that you and I do. What is the word commendable, church? It means to trust. God entrusts us when we do what is right. When we are good stewards, God is commendable and he says, I will bless you with more. Uh, for those of you that are small business owners, there's a saying that says a word of mouth. When we do one good work, the good deed 
spreads and you know the business grows because the word uh, word, uh, word of mouth uh, advertisement pretty much they tell good things about what you've done and in the same sense God sees the good things that we do we are good stewards in our relationships in our families and he continues to bless us blessings upon blessings amen church amen. we are called to be a blessing amen, amen. When we do what is right before the Lord, first and foremost, first things first, as my brother Pastor Matt would say. Let's get to the first things first. Let's work on our relationship this morning Hallelujah. as husbands, as wives. Amen, Amen church? Yes. Perhaps you are here this morning, you're going through something in your relationship, and what better a relationship to talk about but my own relationship with my wife. Amen? It's not perfect. Amen. And I can tell you that uh, there are times where I learn, and that's pretty much, you know, uh, every day I learn something, something good to be rebuked in some ways, be encouraged in some ways. But I know that God is in the midst of our relationship, and that is the key, church. When God is in the midst of your relationship, good days are ahead. Amen? A great life is ahead when God is a center. Of your relationship. I want to close with a verse that is a blessing with me this morning. It's John chapter 10, verse 10. We all know this verse. It says, a thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I pray, church, that you would receive all that God has for you abundantly. Amen. Whatever you are going through this morning, choose life in Christ. He promises that he gives it to you abundantly. Amen. And the enemy does not. He comes to take away from you, to steal your joy in your relationship, to steal, to rob, to kill. But not only that, the promise is from the enemy is he wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your, fam your life. But I pray this morning to choose life. Choose Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we give God a hand of praise this morning? Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful word this morning. Pray that as we continue on in the book of, of Peter, the apostle, Lord, that you would teach us, Lord, to be holy, to draw closer to you, to do what is right. And this morning, we've been talking about the husband's the wives, and a blessing that we were called to if we would obey, if we would love one another, honoring first and foremost you. Forgive us, Lord, yes. for not being the godly men and women that we were called to be yes. because we've strayed away. We've done our own thing. Father, we hear and we've seen in your word this morning that we must come back to life in you. Forgive us of our sin. Make us right before you, Lord. Make us to be better in our relationships, Lord God, that you've ordained. Father God, we thank you. Bless our families, Lord, here in the house, those online. Bless them, Lord. May your Holy Spirit minister to each and every person. Father, may this word go out, Lord, and not return back void. Be effective in all that you've called it and purposed it to be, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. Perhaps you're listening this morning. You don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Perhaps you're, you're in a broken relationship. You don't, where all, don't know where else to turn. But you've turned to the right place this morning. Hallelujah. The word of God. Jesus Christ. The ultimate relationship that you and I must have is not just in our marriage relationship, but a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what he's calling us to this morning. If you don't know him as Lord and Savior, there's an emptiness and brokenness in your life. You've never confessed and repented of your sins. The Bible says in John chapter 3 that we must be born again in order to see the Father in the kingdom of heaven. Romans chapter 10 says that if we confess of our sins, call on the name of Jesus, believe that he is the Son of God, he died and he rose from the dead, you will be saved. 
And this morning you've been searching everywhere in this world, but still can't find that peace. And you will never find the peace and the joy until you receive Jesus and believe on him as your Lord and Savior. If that's you this morning, would you repeat these words with me? Sincerely ask him into your heart and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Father, I've heard the word this morning as it pertained to marriage, our conduct, our calling to be a blessing. And I want your blessings, Lord. I want your face to look upon me because I am doing what is right. I want your ears to hear my prayer so I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Jesus, come into my heart. I believe you are the Son of God, died for my sin, rose from the dead, and you will return. And I want to be ready for that day. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name, and we all said, amen. amen, amen. Can we give God a hand if you said that prayer this morning? Please let us know how we can pray with you, how we can help you in your walk with Christ. If there's anyone that hasn't also been baptized, you've given your life to Jesus, you haven't been baptized, and you want to make that step, let us know. We would love to um, bring you to the waters, amen. amen, and show your profession of faith in your walk with the Lord publicly and what God is doing in your heart. For those of you in the house this morning, if there's a prayer need, please come forward. We'd love to pray with you as well. Amen. Let's all stand this morning as we uh, close our worship time in a song of praise. Make room for Jesus, amen, that he would do whatever it is that he wills to do. Let us stand.
our prayer, Lord, do whatever it is that you will to do, Lord, in our hearts. Father, we've done wrong, Lord, whatever that wrong is, Lord, in each and every one of our lives, Lord, come into our hearts and change it, change our will, change our mind, the conduct of our life, change it for your glory. And that is our prayer, Lord, do whatever you want to do. Father, bless your people today. They've heard your word. Let it grow in their hearts and in their lives, Lord. We are careful to give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name and all of God's people said, amen. amen. Church, can we give God another hand of praise? Amen. God is good. Amen. God bless you, church. Greet one another. Also, next week is Communion Sunday. Please tune in. We look forward to worshiping with you. But God bless you. Amen.
Yeah. 